Hello everyone. Today I'll be telling you about our systematization of knowledge paper on how we can use computer-aided tools to better develop cryptography. This is joint work with the many wonderful co-authors listed here. So we should all be familiar with how difficult it is to get cryptography right. Widely deployed protocols often have high-profile design flaws, heavily scrutinized libraries regularly have bugs, and otherwise secure and correct code can leak secrets through side channels. And all this is to say that cryptography presents a very large attack surface, and the current methods we use to protect against these attacks are pretty hard-pressed to do so. Unfortunately, today we tend to rely on a select few cryptography experts who are armed with rudimentary tooling to vouch for the security and correctness of the world's most important cryptography. And this modest operandi simply can't keep up with the rate of innovation and development in our field. This brings us to computer-aided cryptography, which is an active area of research that aims to address these challenges. But what exactly do we mean by computer-aided? After all, we've long used computers to develop cryptography. So by computer-aided, we're referring to formal, machine-checkable approaches to help in the design, analysis, and implementation of cryptography. And one of the main goals is to improve security without sacrificing the things we care about, such as interoperability and performance. And how exactly can computer-aided crypto help? Well, there are a variety of tools available that address different parts of the problem space. We've broken it down to the three following layers, design level security, functional correctness, and implementation level security. For design level security, today security analysis is primarily done on pen and paper, which is highly error prone and makes double checking security analyses extremely tedious. In addition, pen and paper security proofs often only consider pared down cores of cryptographic protocols to simplify their analysis. But with computer aided tools, we can formally specify designs and automatically check that they enjoy important invariants or otherwise discover new attacks. Using TLS as an example, before version 1.3, the protocol's design phases didn't involve computer aided analysis. But instead, the process was highly reactive, which led to an endless cycle of attacks and patches. And given the complexity of the protocol, early analyses considered only highly simplified cores, but once the academic community started considering more detailed aspects of the protocol, many, many new attacks were discovered. Luckily, this changed during the proactive design process of TLS 1.3. The academic community provided analysis throughout developing multiple drafts, and in studies using symbolic analysis tools, such as Proverif and Tamarin, the process of verifying TLS, actually even just formally specifying it, revealed flaws, led to protocol improvements, and otherwise clarified the documentation of security guarantees. The TLS 1.3 specification was also a rapidly moving target, with large changes being affected on a pretty regular basis. And as changes were made between a total of 28 drafts, previous analyses were often rendered stale within the space of a few months, and this required new analyses and new proofs. So another important benefit of machine checked analyses and proofs over their manual counterparts is that they can be more easily and reliably updated from draft to draft as the protocol evolves. And on top of this, machine checked analyses and proofs can ensure that new flaws aren't introduced as components are changed. For correctness, today's solution for avoiding implementation bugs include co-testing and auditing, but testing is pretty unlikely to catch the kinds of correctness issues we deal with today, and code auditing can be expensive in both time and expertise. But with computer-aided tools, we can formally verify that code is free from memory errors and that it behaves according to some design specification on all possible inputs. For example, OpenSSL has had a long history of bugs, which probably isn't surprising given the demand for highly optimized code. For performance, developers are often required to multiplex implementations by hand for each combination of algorithm, parameter choices, and hardware platform, which increases the risks of introducing bugs. Luckily, things are starting to look different today. For example, recent work from the Project Everest team prevents a new methodology in which developers can write generic code in a verification-friendly language, check that it enjoys certain properties such as memory safety, correctness, and constant time, and compile the code to different platforms that support vector instructions. And this significantly reduces the manual effort needed to add new implementations and minimizes the room for error. 
We also want to point out that verified implementations are now as fast or faster than their unverified counterparts. Through decades of research in formal verification, it was pretty commonly accepted that the proof burden in verifying complex optimized code was exorbitant, and that verified code would be pretty hard pressed to compete with unverified code. But various projects in the cryptography domain have challenged the position, and we're now seeing verified implementations that meet the performance of the fastest unverified implementations. And this leads us to believe that there's currently no conceptual or technological barrier that prevents us from verifying the fastest implementations available, although more verification effort is certainly expected. And as a small case study, we looked at curve 25519, which is a widely used elliptic curve that's received considerable interest from the applied cryptography community in setting new speed records, and also the formal methods community in verifying that high-speed implementations are correct and secure. So we compared a number of implementations which comprise some of the fast available verified and unverified implementations written in C, assembly, or a combination of both. Here, verified implementations have blue bars, while unverified implementations have red bars. And we report the number of CPU cycles to perform scalar multiplication, so here lower is better. And as we can see, verified implementations achieve best-in-class performance for both C and assembly implementations. Finally, for implementation level security, today, in order to protect against timing side channels, developers need to apply tricky constant time coding recipes and hope that they haven't missed any vulnerable code. And these recipes prohibit control flow, memory access patterns, and variable time operations that depend on any secret data. But with computer-aided tools, developers can automatically check whether or not their code is constant time, or even automatically transform variable time code into constant time code. And so it turns out that writing constant time code really is pretty unnatural and difficult to do. A botched patch for a timing vulnerability in TLS led to the lucky 13 timing vulnerability in open cell, and in turn, the lucky 13 patch led to yet another timing vulnerability. Fortunately today, there are many tools that let developers annotate program inputs as either public or secret, and then automatically check that the program is constant time. And these have already been applied to many real-world libraries, for example, portions of the assembly code in OpenSSL have been verified using Veil. High-speed implementations of SHA-3 and TLS 1.3 cipher suites have been verified using Jasmine. And various off-the-shelf libraries have been analyzed using FlowTracker. Moreover, quite a bit of recent work, including several papers at this conference, have begun tackling the problem of protecting cryptographic code against microarchitectural kernel side channel attacks. For example, work by Jill Barth and others shows how to verifiably protect cryptographic implementations against various specter style attacks with only a modest performance penalty. And we expect formal reasoning about microarchitectural side channels to be an exciting area of computer aided crypto research in the coming years. So that's how computer aided crypto can be used to help with design level security, functional correctness, and implementation level security. But at this point, it's also important to emphasize that. Computer-aided crypto is not just academic crypto, but it really is real-world crypto. I've already touched on TLS 1.3, for which there were many substantial efforts in verifying implementations and analyzing its security using both symbolic and computational tools. But there are many other examples of computer-aided crypto artifacts being widely deployed in practice. For example, Amazon Web Services Key Management Service has a machine-checked security proof in EasyCrypt, the Hackle Star and Hackle N projects, born out of Project Everest, have delivered verified primitives that are being used in Firefox. The Fiat Cryptography project has delivered verified elliptic curve code that's being used in Google's Boring SSL library. And more recently, the Project Everest Evercrypt project has delivered verified primitives that are being used in the Linux kernel's built in VPN. Even though these success stories are great, in order to fully appreciate the benefits of computer aided crypto, it's also important to acknowledge that formal guarantees do come with limitations. Namely that to make formal analysis tractable, formal models are almost always a simplification of the real world. And so for design level of security, this means that protocol models are often simplified into cryptographic cores that ignore many details about designs and attacker capabilities. For correctness, there may be gaps between what's being verified and the output machine code. For example, verification might be carried out on a verification-friendly 
representation of the source code rather than on the source code itself. Or if verification is performed on C code, we have to trust mainstream C compilers, which frequently have bugs, and even if the code they produce is correct, they might introduce side channels that weren't present in the original source code. And for implementation level security, formal models simply can't capture all physically observable effects of hardware, which leaves room for unaccounted side channels. To make matters worse, new microarchitectural side channels, such as Spectre, have revealed gaps between what we think is being leaked and what's actually being leaked. On top of it all, in order to carry formal guarantees all the way down the stack, we have to make sure that we haven't left any gaps in our modeling between layers. And it's in these gaps that we really need to focus our attention. But closing these gaps does leave many exciting research challenges for the future. For example, an important lesson we learned from TLS 1.3 is that standardization processes can embrace design changes that simplify security arguments and help modular reasoning. The TLS 1.3 design incorporated many suggestions from the academic community that simplified automated analysis. For example, this included changes to the key schedule that help with key separation, which simplified modular proofs, and also including more transcript information in exchanges, which simplified consistency proofs. These changes overall had negligible impact on the performance of the protocol, but it helped make analyzing such a complex protocol feasible. To carry correctness guarantees down to machine code, they can be established at source level and compiled using a verified compiler, such as Comsert. But today's verified compilers produce pretty slow code, so important future work is to incorporate more optimizations, including support for SIMD instructions. And alternatively, there's a lot to be gained if we focus more efforts on scalably verifying assembly code directly, which currently requires quite a bit more work than verifying, say, C code. And finally, to achieve a sound formal treatment of protecting against side channel attacks, Gua, Yerome, and Heiser have argued the need for a new security-oriented hardware software contract. The work by Marco Guarnieri and others on hardware software contracts for secure speculation, which is appearing at this conference, makes some headway in this general direction. But the problem with today's ISAs is that they describe what a developer needs to know to write a functionally correct program, but they're an insufficient specification when it comes to writing secure programs. So in order to carry side channel countermeasures at the software level down to hardware, we need ISAs that capture, for example, the temporal behavior of programs. To fix this, researchers have called on new ISA designs that expose, for example, the temporal behaviors of hardware, which can lend to reasoning about them in software. This, of course, poses challenging and competing requirements for hardware architects, but we do believe that developing formal foundations for verification and reasoning about security at the hardware software interface can help. And this line of work seems also to be the only path that can lead towards a sound formal treatment of microarchitectural side channel attacks. And finally, to bridge any gaps between layers, we encourage more efforts focused on consolidating all of these guarantees. The holy grail of computer-aided crypto would be to deliver guarantees on machine code that match the strength and elegance of guarantees on cryptographic designs. So now that you're all a little bit more familiar with computer-aided crypto, let's think about what computer-aided tools might change in the grand scheme of things. Even though we've made some great strides in the past few years alone, I think the answer is that it's not totally clear yet. You know, will computer-aided crypto fulfill its promises and put graphic designers out of work? Well, it's only recently been deployed in the wild, so it remains to be seen how well formal guarantees actually hold up. But it's important to remember that security isn't about being perfect, but rather raising the bar for attackers. So maybe we shouldn't expect a world with no high-profile vulnerabilities, but maybe just a few per year instead of 10 per year. What I do know for sure is that this will be an exciting area of research for many years to come. And so with that, I hope I've piqued your interest in computer-aided crypto. If you want to learn more, I hope that you'll check out our full SOK paper, which includes in-depth tool comparisons, more research challenges, and various case studies. Thanks for listening, and I'll be happy to take any of your questions.